Hey guys, and welcome to this brand new video. This is Kane TV. Today we'll take a look at BRSF. And they issued a strategy keynote, an update, because BRSF was not at all going the way a business should go in the last couple of years. I've made several videos about BSF where I've stated my concerns, where I've stated that I wouldn't necessarily invest, and the last video I made was that I was wrong. But with that strategy update, I kind of have to, well, rewrite that last chapter because I wasn't that wrong. And we'll take a look at why that is. With that said, let's go straight ahead. For all of you that do not know BSF, BSF is the world's largest producer of chemical products with a market cap of 43 billion it's euros it's not us dollars euros dividend yield of seven percent we'll take a look at that later around about 112 000 employees we see the company has a lot of debt not that much cash does have minority interest and enterprise value 65 billion but overall they do have around 20 billion in debt which is not that much if we take a look at the ebitda which we'll do in a sack um actually we'll do it now so we go to annual and then go to revenue we see one thing and that is that the revenue for a very long time pretty much stayed the same then jumped in 2021 jumped again in 2022 which is quite good but decreased again in 2023 net income moved up and down but overall down and the EBITDA is around 8 billion, which give us, gives us a EBITDA to debt ratio of around about 2.5. Well, that's fine. Uh, for more details, let's just go to Coltrane, because I think it's a bit better illustrated. And here's the first part. So what I've mentioned is that from 20, 2008 in my last videos, the revenue never really grew that much. Okay, we had little revenue growth here new all-time high in 2022 when it comes to revenue this is now in us dollars sorry for the confusion but overall you you can say the company is not really going left bottom corner upper right corner what you want to see and that in a time where the whole world like the 2010s the world was booming literally booming if we take a look at the EBITDA same story free cash flow same story if we take a look at the free cash flow for sure where well, we're three dollars and 37 cents and that is not at all an upwards trend that is just sometimes you have a free cash flow per share sometimes you don't but overall not what you want to see um, same goes obviously with net income and so on. The only thing we do see is that the dividend grew a bit over time, but ever since, yeah, pretty much 2010, there was one big jump, and then ever since it just grew by 10 cents. That's it, that's not much, and then it stayed the same, then was increased again by 10 cents, but if you increase from two two euros fifty to two euros and sixty, well, that's at least four percent growth. Uh, here at the end, from three thirty to three four, that's three percent growth. Uh, that's still not much. That's way above inflation. So dividend growth isn't really good. Overall, all the things that I've mentioned are still the same. The only thing where I was wrong is that the company didn't go bankrupt and the only thing where I was wrong is that the company didn't go bankrupt and the whole situation with the gas played out well better than anticipated. Also, if we take a look at the chart and then again go in the super chart. So what we do see is the last day, 27 of October was quite good, but overall, I don't know, I mean, <laughs> The stock used to trade at areas close to 100. Now we're trading at what? Below 50, so 50% decrease. If we take a look at the weekly, here it looks significantly better, but overall we're still 2007 levels. So if you haven't had the dividend in all of those years, 
you would be plus minus zero in what is that 17 years there's not a solid performance not at all zero solid performance but with that said let's take a look whether things are changing with this strategy update excuse me strategy keynote the reason for that keynote is because we got a new boss marcus kamiet is a new one the old one is gone and one thing is a winning culture plus value creation that's what i want to do surprise where they always has always have like sports background but let's see whether that actually comes true or what their ideas are for creating value that's what i would be interested in if i were a show or what i'm not we create the foundation for attractive shareholder distribution so the first thing is they want to reach 10 to 12 billion EBITDA um, in 2028 that's okay they want to have a cumulative free cash flow of above 12 billion from 2025 to 2028 and a return on capital employed of above around about 10 percent and here we see the first thing they at least two euros and 25 cents annual dividend per share that means the dividend is most likely going to be cut so for all of those who wrote in the comment that i'm a dumbass for not buying into that seven or eight percent dividend yield yes thanks a lot because at least 225 that's good at least that but we don't know whether it's higher or lower i wouldn't be surprised if it's that if it's literally just that from now to 2028 because the company does have a lot of that, barely any growth, they have to restructure the whole company, more or less. And we'll see that because if we go to that slide here, we see we got the core business and the standalone business. Here are these different businesses, and we'll see that BSF has an idea what to do with those, which is to consider, for example, an IPO for the agriculture solutions, to think about de risk the battery materials they want to de-risk meaning they want to pretty much cancel the whole thing so what they want to do or at least it seems to me is they want to really concentrate on their core businesses and think what they can do best and invest in those areas because i've mentioned things haven't gone good maybe we'll see an ipo for the agriculture solutions i don't know but what we definitely will see a concentration in Asia. What do I mean by that? As we can see here, more than 80% of global economical market growth will come from advanced countries. I do not know what they state at advanced countries is whole, the whole of was that Southeast Asia, India, Asia, Japan, all of that. Is that advanced? Is that not advanced? I do not know. But it seems as if especially Asia were surprised with a lot of people and a lot of economic growth there is where they want to be that's also the reason why they did this a very very massive investment in Xiangyang which is in China and there they invested 12 uh, over 10 billion dollars uh, euros which is the largest investment outside of the home market here in Germany Ludwigshafen so it's a gigantic gigantic facility and with that facility they have the idea to move forward to go into these growth markets where the new growth is because surprise it is way cheaper to ship something from china for example to singapore than it is from germany <clears throat> here we can see how they want to achieve that free cash flow and we see we have i would say negative or very low free cash flow but then a growth and free cash flow again we see the capex is about to be reduced well because if you reduce capex well you don't spend that much money but also if you don't spend that much money maybe in the future you aren't equipped with top of the art equipment so it's always a double-sided sword but here we can see how they want to boost the free cash flow ever since uh, going onwards from i would say 2026 roundabout with that said, let's go back to their main slot, uh, to, to trading view, because I think here we can sum the whole thing up. So BSF has a new strategy keynote. What's the goal? Well, the goal is to achieve between 10 and $12 billion in EBITDA in 2028. That is a growth of 50% with the trailing 12 months EBITDA. 
would be really, really nice. They also mentioned they want to have accumulated free cash flow of $12 billion. If we take a look at the reason free cash flow, we see there was $2.7 billion. So let's round it to, yeah. So they need at least $1.3 billion more in free cash flow, which is a 50% growth that they achieve $4 billion in free cash flow, and then they want to have that three years in a row. So next year, we need to see 50% more free cash flow, and that for at least for three more years. I'm not quite sure whether they want to, well, whether they manage to do that. I don't really see how they're supposed to do it, because um, I see a decrease here in the free cash flow since 2017. They cut the dividend, or at least most likely will cut the dividend. Um, they want to buy back shares. That's what they also mentioned. I forgot that. Sorry. Here they mentioned share buybacks will play an important role in our capital allocation, considering it and are targeted from 27, uh, 2027 onward at the latest. I do find that interesting because the whole company is not that expensive. I mean, it, they, they haven't made money right now. But... Again, if we take a look at the chart long term, they can buy back shares in reduced amount of shares, which they did, by the way, in the past. So we see they used to do, they were a big share buyer, share back buyer. Um, and I would say that might help the, the, the price of the stock because we haven't seen a lot of movement there, especially not in an upwards direction. So it wasn't really a pleasure to be a BSF shareholder. But all of that, it, it just doesn't convince me. I don't know about you guys, but it just doesn't convince me. Um, maybe in two or three years, we can take a look at BSF and see whether the company managed to change all of those things that they need to change to be a prosperous uh, company. But I don't want to be a shareholder waiting for that to happen. I want to be a shareholder when that happens. And I would be more fine with buying the company at 70, 80, even 90, if I see the company is really performing again. Because right now, we do not have a performing company, and I just don't see a reason to buy a non-performing company. I just don't see a reason for that. So with that said, even with the new strategy update and so on, BSF is just not a company for me. I mean, literally, let's say, for example, Sintas. Law would say, well, that company is like super overpriced. Should have done it here. Yes, Sintas does have a PE ratio of 52. That is super, super high. But if you go on financials and go here, what you see with Sintas is continuous revenue growth often with high numbers and you see often an increase in the forecast you see net income growth you see EBITDA growth often double digit you see the amount of shares are decreased you see absolutely beautiful dividend growth so I, I, I really don't see a reason to buy a company like BSF, if I can buy a company like Sintas, which is definitely way more expensive, I have a definitely a lower dividend yield, but I have a functioning business and a quite good functioning business. So that's my opinion. I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Let me know what you think about BSF. Um, prove me wrong. I would be really happy if you can prove me wrong with solid arguments. Again, just smash that keyboard and type it into the comments. And with that said, see you soon, guys. Bye.